This is the eighth video presentation for the Case Natural Resources in Ecology course. As you view this video, be sure to make notes of important information. Feel free to pause, repeat, and resume the video whenever necessary. Energy in Ecosystems, Lesson 5.1, The Energy of Life. You recently completed Unit 4, Lighter Than Air. In this lesson, we will explore how energy moves throughout ecosystems. A source of energy for living organisms is the sun. Autotrophs are organisms that are capable of producing their own food. They capture the light energy of the sun and convert it into other forms of energy through photosynthesis. Not all light energy that enters the atmosphere of the Earth is utilized for photosynthesis. A great deal of light energy is reflected back into space or held within the atmosphere. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy has many forms, including light and chemical, which are converted and used within an ecosystem. The laws of thermodynamics state basic rules for the transfer of energy. The first law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. However, there is energy lost during transfer due to heat loss and other physical processes, according to the second law. Producers consist of plants and other organisms that capture sunlight and through photosynthesis produce energy. Consumers acquire energy through the consumption of other organisms. Herbivores eat only plant matter, while carnivores consume herbivores and or other carnivores. Consumers are classified according to their role in the food chain. Herbivores are primary consumers because they consume plant material. Carnivores are secondary, tertiary, and quaternary consumers. The numeric designations refer to how many links in the food chain the consumer is away from the producers. When plants and animals die, there is energy and nutrients that remain in the tissues. Decomposers and detritivores break down the energy and the nutrients into inorganic compounds that may enter the nutrient cycle again. Productivity is measured in terms of gross, net, and secondary. Gross productivity is all organic matter produced by plants. Net productivity is the biomass produced beyond what plants need for survival. Secondary production refers to the amount of energy that moves to the next trophic level. A great deal of energy is lost as it transfers up trophic levels. Feeding higher order consumers takes a great deal of energy from producers. Using the 10% loss as an example, an eagle that weighs 10 pounds would need to consume 100 kilocalories from the mouse population. Those mice consumed by the eagle in turn would have had to consume a thousand kilocalories from grass. Another example showing more trophic levels illustrates how much energy needs to be produced by plants in order to support tertiary consumers. The amount and intensity of light reaching the surface of the earth influences the level of productivity of plants and production of biomass, assuming adequate moisture. In areas receiving more light energy, greater biodiversity exists as there is more energy available to plants. Conversely, in areas with less light available, there is less biodiversity due to the lack of plants capable of thriving in such areas. As a review, mark or highlight three key points in your notes that are important to remember from this presentation. List two ideas or concepts that relate to previous knowledge. List any questions you have about this topic. Discuss these questions with your instructor. Keep any notes you have from this presentation organized and available for use throughout the course.
Through Activity 5.1.1 Energy Transfer, you will determine the sequence of energy flow of a group of organisms and sketch the food web in order to understand how energy and nutrients flow through trophic levels within an ecosystem. Your teacher will share instructions for you and your partner before the activity.